when friends drop in, invite them to make friends with Valley Forge. You said it. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Try a frosty cold glass of Bavarian right away. What's that you say? No boulder dash or baloney here. Cheers, everyone, and welcome to the Unfiltered Gentleman. And now, serving up a flight that's ice cold and unfiltered, goes a Greg, Sour Scott, Dunkle Dan, and Alt Beer Alley. That's right. Welcome in, everybody. It's us, or some combination of us. It's the Unfiltered Gentleman. Thanks for listening. Thanks for drinking along. I am Greg. Over there is Ali. I love wrestling because Flex does. <laughs> Hi, guys. What's happening? <laughs> and of course, the one who loves wrestling for reals, Flex. Oh. Hey guys, I just want to say uh, thanks for having me. I finally uh, on the show and uh, couldn't be happier. Well, we couldn't be happier and more nervous. This is like take seven tonight. We've uh, <laughs> we've had a night. The butterflies getting, are real. They I'm are dying right now. So shaking. real, shaking like a leaf. Guys. He he <laughs> flexed his little arms and we got super nervous. So uh, welcome mm-hmm. in everybody. Thanks for joining. We are the Unfiltered Gentleman, a podcast centered around craft beer, the liquid, the lifestyle, and everything in between. If you're joining for the first time, welcome. Grab a beer, settle in. We love interaction, so hit us up on the grams, on the socials. Email us, theunfilteredgentleman at gmail.com. Call us, 805-538-BEER. And if you're one of our best beer friends, then welcome back. Hope you're hydrated, and if not, then you should fix that. And I learned something new today. There are 72,000 new podcast episodes released every day. So in a world that's averaging 72,000 new shows a day, we're glad you're hanging out with us because that is a lot. Oh, my gosh. Uh, Tonight, we got a lot to get to. Like we said, special guest on tonight. Some people know him as Derek, but we refuse to recognize his real name. Uh, You know him on the gram as Flex Me a Beer underscores in between. Flex, I'm so glad you finally were able to uh, hang out with us. Yeah, it's... uh such an honor people know me as a huge flake so i'm really uh (laughs) hell i'm proud of myself that i showed up tonight we're all proud of you we're glad we could fix that so uh tonight we're going to review one beer and then spend about the next 35 minutes talking about why Shawn michaels versus rick flair at wrestlemania 24 was one of the best matches of all time just ever oh, in history. Come on. Yeah. What the fuck? No, guys. <laughs> hope, no. Hope Allie's okay with that. It's going to be fuck great. That. I gotta go. <laughs> Would you rather talk about uh, the Iron Man match between HBK and, and Bret Hart at WrestleMania 12? Is that more your style? What, 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 let me know when we're going to start talking about CM Punk. Okay, we can talk okay, about we can CM do that. Punk. Yeah, yeah. yeah we that. we've lost everybody at this point. So uh, <laughs> let's see if we can gain them back with a little beer. All talk. right, Flex, can you take off your shirt? We need to bring a couple more people back in. Yeah, it's off. All right, I, cool. I'm picturing. I, they I literally, it off. I literally just flex it off. It was, oh, oof! It was Hulk, even better. We, Hulk Hogan's got nothing on you. Eat I'll your heart be right out. Back. Right. <laughs> All right, let's. Uh, <laughs> Let's not waste any more time and get right into some beer talk. Grab your libations, pals. It's time for Beer of the Week. And if you're drinking well, you know that you're my friend. And I'll say, I think I'll have myself a beer. Having myself a beer indeed. This one comes by way of Hen House Brewing up in Northern California. This is The Walrus is Paul. I found out that Flex was doing a music themed beer, so I had to do the same thing. Uh, 6.7% has a 387 on Untapped. It's a little long description, like they've been hanging out with the folks at Stone. Uh, it says, as we all know, Paul died in a car accident in 1966 and re- was replaced by a young lookalike named Billy Shears, often referred to as Faux Paul or simply Fall. This was a calculated move by the surviving members, their manager, and MI6, who enjoyed the distraction that Beatlemania provided. The band retired from public performance and entered their studio years, period, reluctantly acceding to this deception. But guilt overcame them, and they began leaking hints of the truth in hidden backward recordings and album cover art. John even sang, here's another clue for you all, the walrus is Paul. The question isn't who is Paul, we know that's been decades, we know who that's been for decades, after all, and Fall has been Paul longer than Paul was Paul. And certainly Fall has been Paul longer than Billy was Billy. The question is... What is Paul? A man from Liverpool or an idea? <sighs> Take a breath after that one. Uh, this beer is all about grapefruit juice, pine, and an encore of subtle, sweet mint from two of our favorite hops, Centennial and Pacific Jade. 
Uh, after that long description, I need a drink. I mean, was that even a description, though? <laughs> it was more a very long conspiracy theory about <laughs> Paul McCartney. My, my, my mind is yeah. blown on that one. I, I, I'm so confused right now. <laughs> good well, thing I, you're good at describing beer, Greg. I better uh, pick that up. So uh, this bad boy, it's hazy. It's got a nice little light tropical nose. The, fla- the flavor, the flavor... Follows that right up with some nice tropical fruits, a little bit of citrus, a little orange, I think I'm picking up there, and then uh, finishes off with just enough dankness to dry things up and make you want to come back for more and not leave that sticky, ooey feeling in your mouth. This is really nice. It's an easy drinker. Uh, 6.7%. You could have a couple of these in a day and, and be good to go. But I really, beyond liking the beer because it was delicious, I really loved the can art and the description because I'm a Beatles fan. So uh, that was fun. The, the can art, which I'll post a picture up, up on our gram, the Unfiltered Gentleman, is uh, four hens walking across the street like uh, you know the Beatles and the album cover and everything. So. Oh, right on. That's gnarly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Now Allie's hey, on Hey, you guys remember when the Red Hot Chili Peppers did a did a, a spoof or a, a take on that when they were walking across the street light, but they all, or the stop, whatever that thing is. I don't know. They all had that. Um, socks on their peckers. Oh, yeah, that's, yes. that's the only thing I remember about them is the socks on the peckers. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> the old peen sock. Right, yep, exactly. Yep, yep, the happy socks. Right. And then they proceeded to jump rope. <laughs> oh, that was something different. <laughs> something something different. So, um, I wish I would have known about the Beatles memo because we have a Beatles beer at Refuge right now that I could have totally gotten after. Oh, but you know about the whole Paul is dead thing, right? Like this isn't news to you. Wait, are you saying because he actually is dead? No, it was like this big uh, conspiracy. Yeah. Oh, a little bit. Uh, I'm trying to stay back away from all that shit again. I'm I'm going back to sleep, guys. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to know anything anymore. I, I mean, this was from the 60s. I think it's okay to... I wasn't even alive then. It's fine. I'm not saying <laughs> you <fine>. were. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho, Hen House Brewing. This is a great beer. Uh, this is one of the first ones I had from them. I, in fact, I, I hadn't had them until uh did the little Instagram live with, with Bob over at Hen House. He sent me this one in their Hellas and both really good. So if you are in California, I think you can order for shipping and and uh, some you know regions are getting more of it than others. So have have a look out for uh, Hen House Brewing. Really good stuff. Um, all right, let's discuss some things. Have a grievance to share? It's time for a crotch talk. I don't know that I have any grievances. A uh, few things to talk about. First, we were uh, reminiscing the other day, my wife and I, that it has been almost a year now since the world shut down. And we realized, I mean, everyone's like, duh, of course. But what we really realized is that uh, it's been a year since we've been in an Uber. How crazy is that? That is crazy. I don't know if you get, yeah, we haven't Ubered since the shutdown. Oh my goodness. I mean, I haven't either. My last Uber was uh, February of uh, 2020. (laughs) Wow. Ours was the day the world closed out here in California. I think it was March 17th, whatever day it was. Friday the 13th is when the announcement came in, and then the following Monday was when it was like light switch. Well, Sunday is when we found out that Monday was going to be that light switch. And I we were out, not even out, we were at a friend's house. It was six cu- or three couples, there was six of us, we're having brunch at their house. Somebody texted me and said, did you see this? And it was like the governor announcement, that everything's going to be shutting down the next day. So we <laughs> jumped in an Uber and went to like three different breweries that day. We're like, we got to get it in while we can because we're not going to be able to go for a couple weeks. Well, at least you guys had the right mindset. Oh, yeah. Let's yeah. let's drink our sorrows away. Uh, yeah. And there was a brewery locally that was going to be their soft opening was that Sunday, the last open day of <laughs> pre-Rona. Gosh, so we, we visited crazy. them before the, all this happened and our other favorite 14 cannons. It was a day of uh, drinking and debauchery. And it was great. But uh who knew that'd be our last Uber ride for a year? Yeah, that's something you never think about. Wow. How come you haven't been in an Uber since then? There hasn't been a need. I mean, going out has significantly decreased. Uh, and then being in close quarters with people that are potentially gross, who have been in close quarters with a bunch of other people who are potentially gross. Not the greatest feeling in the world. Um, with everything shut down, there's just way less need. And we've, our, you know, we've kind of uh, made part of our bubble, our friends Nick and Nicole. And whenever we just hang out with each other now... Uh, we stay at each other's house. So we just, whoever we're hanging out with, we just get hammered and stay at their house or our house, whatever. Yeah, um, slumber. Yeah, we've we've saved a bunch on Uber rides and oh, going yeah. out. Yeah, and, that's the way to go. So, On a scale of one to 10, how surprised would you be if I told you that I've still taken Ubers? Oh, like a 0.3? <laughs> zero surprise. I'm going zero straight surprise. up zero. Zero yeah. surprise. <laughs> 
<laughs> You've been in Yuma, Arizona for half the Rona. Why would I, I be surprised? Yo, at I'm doing Uber my ride? part to keep the economy alive. Okay. In Yuma, I'm doing my part. Uh huh. Good for well, you. Yuma's not my choice, but the Uber drivers they need they need to get their they need some money in their pockets. They need okay? their loving too. Yeah. Yeah. It's service industry. I'm not even trying to get a DUI, guys. Either am I. I'm just staying at friends' houses instead, like a cheap ass. <laughs> I just I just drink at my house in my basement, usually by myself, and uh, don't need to drive there. Yeah, Flex, you have something that's weird to us Californians, and that's a basement. Ah, yes, that's uh, where I'm sitting at right now. It's uh, it's a quite wonderful spot, actually. Is it sort of like your man cave? Yeah. Well, yeah. So um, I got three TVs. Oh my god. Yeah, and each TV Holy has shit. its own what purpose. The fuck? There is a uh, a movie slash uh, connected to the cable TV. Okay. Then I have a smart TV used for the streaming services, Netflix, Disney Plus, et cetera. Sure. Pornhub. And then, uh, well, come on now. Everybody knows that. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> the third TV is connected to my retro classic uh, see-through blue Nintendo 64. Oh, nice. Yes. Very cool. Oh, we just God. whipped out the Super Nintendo a couple months ago. It's been great. Well, good for you. That's the best news I've heard all day. <laughs> yeah. See, we don't get basements out here in California because earthquakes happen. So everyone's afraid of having a basement. But oh, I'm yeah. super jealous. I want a basement. I want to go like have my man cave downstairs where I have like beer fridges and all that good Hell stuff. Yeah. yeah. I'll have to yeah. give you a tour sometime. I got the, the beer fridge right next to the third TV. I got Captain America shit all over the place. That's awesome. Big, Cap- big Captain America fan. You're just going to get like the doorbell ringing one day. It's going to be Allie and I ready for that tour. <laughs> Yeah, hey, come on over, guys. Come on over. <laughs> yeah. Do you great. like Captain America because you look like Captain America? Ah, uh, you know, it's kind of what he stands for. Always really uh, yeah. spoke to me, you know, the being buff, the heart, the courage, <laughs> just always, you know, always being the good guy, knowing right from wrong kind of thing. You know, the lame shit, you know. What a guy. So you're like kind and hot. <laughs> <laughs> Oof. It's going to be one of those shows, people. <laughs> Strap in. <laughs> Sorry. Anytime you guys want us to cool her down, we'll just start talking wrestling. It'll be great. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you're talking about CM Punk. Hell, <laughs> well, she turns into a Sahara desert. Um, so anyways. <laughs> not CM Punk. Not CM Punk. He's a he's a great looking guy with a great looking wife, too. Yeah, and great tattoos. Fuck? He's married, mm-hmm. too? He's he married. Actually, he actually works out at a spot not too far away. Oh, really? Out in uh, Brookfield, he usually works out at this huge, huge gym out there. So that's about like uh, 20 minutes northwest of me. I, I guess we should tell people uh, Flex is in Wisconsin. All right, I have a question. When you guys arm wrestled, who won? <laughs> I actually don't arm wrestle, but... Uh, Wait, what? Oh, because you're kind. And he you doesn't want to like hurt people. Yeah, yes. yeah, it's just, you know, it's, yeah, it's not yeah, my yeah, thing. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a lover, yeah, not yeah. a fighter. <laughs> Oh, oh dear man i yeah. wonder if you ever meet shred if you if he'll take no for an answer oh uh, shred wants to arm wrestle me so bad it's disgusting oh so bad <laughs> so, so bad. bad no he is completely hellbent on the idea <laughs> totally and, and let me put yep. you at ease i have no interest in beating you at arm wrestling so <laughs> <laughs> we're good so here's a funny story you know so up in uh, up north wisconsin where there's nothing to do my best friend went to school there so i was partying with him and a couple of guys and one of his guys, his college friend sees me and he's like, hey, let's arm wrestle. And I'm like, just told you guys, you know, I don't do that thing. So I told him, I don't do that thing. He goes, nah, I'll give you some pointers. My grandpa was a world <laughs> champion arm wrestler. Wow. <laughs> that's right. Because that's what you do in northern Wisconsin. You don't do shit else but right. farm and learn how to arm wrestle. That's how they keep warm. Yeah. So uh, this dude gave me all these pointers, had me actually arm wrestle him. And let me get him about halfway down until he just took me to school, <laughs> <laughs> pinched every single one of the nerves in my hands. Oh, my God. And, uh, oh, jeez. Yeah, just threw my hand on the table. That's hardcore. So he ruined you. Like, so he gave you all this, like, hope, like, oh, no, you got this. You're going to kick my ass, even though I'm super trained. And then he pulled the, what's the over the top? Pulled the over the top on you. Yeah, but the the thing was, is he was super encouraging the entire <laughs> arm wrestling match. You got this, man. But yeah, then, even while he was beating me, and after he beat me, just super encouraging, super supportive. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I'm so confused right now. That's the way of the Midwest. They're very nice as they kick your ass. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure we hugged afterwards. You know, of course, whatever. I just met him. Why not? It's almost Canada. Why not? And it was before COVID. Oh, perfect. One of these days, we'll get the Shred versus Flex 
wrestle off. Oh, it's going to happen. Yeah, I'm sure it will. And I'm going to be there. Anybody do anything fun? Any new breweries you guys checking out? Anything cool like that? I went to a new brewery. I'll be posting about it in a couple days on the gram, but I went to Embolden, which is in San Diego. Okay. I think that they were established in 2020, so they're they're pretty new. Ooh, they're fresh. Yeah. Really amazing spot. Like, I've kind of just started seeing them. You remember a couple uh, months ago when we did the Syndicate Brewery Peak Show, whatever, in Temecula when we went to Solaris? A little bit of a crawl. Yeah, a little bit. So we were at Solaris, and in one of the guys from Embolden came in and like just dropped off a couple of cans and I didn't see them come or go, but I did see the cans like sitting on the brew house and I was like, Oh my gosh, like what's this brewery? And so, you know, I looked them up on the gram and I'm like, Oh, it looks super cool. And it was kind of during like, you know, the, it was that other shutdown where right. shit was kind of like not really open. And so I kept messaging them and messaging them and kind of creeping on their gram a little bit in the kindest way, not stalker way possible. Sure. And found out they were open again. So I met It's Hoppy on the gram. I met her the other day for beers there and just a really rad spot. Like totally one of those spots that you want to, I would like to encourage everybody to go check out, uh, throw them on your radar Really amazing beers, um, a little bit of everything. I think they definitely had a little bit of everything. Um, I had a flight and then I had a Sour Blonde, which mm. was ridiculous. It was called Lost in Rios. It was conditioned on um, passion fruit. And it was kind of like, it looked kind of like a hazy. It was super like opaque. and that Sounds was, delicious. Just like this place was fucking eye candy. Like everywhere you go, it's so pretty. You know, I think that breweries are just like getting smarter and smarter. Like if you just make a rad spot, people are going to advertise for you for free. Like if you have a cool little corner and someone's going to tag and be like, hey, you know, on the gram or Facebook or whatever, like, hey, look where I was. And people, they're going to want to go there. Honestly, I went there because I'd seen um, also Sud Dud Society had made a post about them oh. or whatever. And that's when I kind of connected the two after I saw them at Solaris. And so just rad spot, really good people. They had a cool little, uh, a trolley, like a little trolley that, you know, beeps around San Diego <laughs> and it, they turned it into a pizza truck. And nice. that was fucking rad. That sounds rad. Yeah. That sounds amazing. super yeah. rad. It was fucking I'm rad. In. So yeah, really cool. Pizza and beer. That's, you just can't go wrong. Dude, that's match you put, made that, that's put literally that like, you put that anywhere, yeah. and I'm going to be there. Yeah, pizza and beer and stout and nachos. <laughs> Throw back to last week. <laughs> Fucking love Chris. Yeah, she's great. Not to <laughs> take anything best. away from these guys, because it sounds like a great spot. I need to take you to Helix. I cannot wait. Okay. It's the raddest spot. They have the best sours. It's a little head and, <gasps> hidden gem down there in that San Diego region. I cannot wait to take you to Helix. Oh, it's in San Diego? Yeah, it's in La Mesa. Okay, so does that mean I can't go without you now? I have to wait. I mean, I love those guys, and I want all the support going to them, so please go. Helix Brewing Company. <laughs> please go if if I don't make it down there in time, but uh, if I do make it down there, I'd love to introduce you to Helix Brewing. Those guys are awesome. Cameron, he's been on the show a couple of times. His sours, he he uh, oak, well, barrel ages all his sours. Everything's wild fermented for his sour program. Okay. Nothing's kettle soured. Nothing, it's all done the... The old school way. It's awesome. So okay. good. And his, cl- his clear yeah. beer, his clean beer is delicious too. But that sour program he's got is amazing. Oh, they're nice. Very <laughs> cool. Okay, Helix. I'm looking them up right now. Yeah, they're great. Yeah. Flex, what cool. about you? What's going on? Any uh, any breweries to know? Uh, yeah, no, stopped at this uh, newer brewery for me a couple weeks ago called uh, New Barons Brewing Co-op. And okay. uh, they're at a spot just on the outskirts of downtown Milwaukee. You know, like Allie was saying about the atmosphere, mm-hmm. I mean, just great atmosphere at this place. It, it's small, probably five or six tables plus bar seating. They had great beer. They got some awesome tables up uh, literally right outside of all like the big brewing kettles. Mm, nice. So you can sit kind of like right where they uh, they do the damn thing. And <laughs> on top of it, you know, like I said, they have uh, just outstanding IPAs. Uh, they had a milkshake IPA that... I've never seen a color of it before. It was like a, what I would consider like a hazy lemonade. Okay. Okay. Yeah. The the flavor on it was just absolutely insane. Uh, so then to top it all off, this brewery offers a two hundred dollar lifetime membership program. Okay, pasta. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I mean, you nerd. <laughs> two hundred dollars. You become 
a member owner at this brewery as well. Okay, I'm in. What well, do you get? Member owner? Yeah, so you get say in a merchandise voting on like the kind of merch that they put no out. Oh shit. What? You get to vote on beer names that they come out with for their new beers. Hell yeah. Fuck yeah. That's rad. Yeah, so I'm going to be joining this spot in about a week or two. Yeah. Do you get like discounts or free beer like how So you do you get 10% off of merch, you get 10% off to go beer, which mm. around here you don't find that anywhere. Yeah. You don't find any any kind of discount on to go beer, but the uh the perk that really got me is if you become a member owner, you can do guest beer tending appearances. What? <gasps> What? So you step in for a night, planned out, and you get to pour beers all goddamn night long. So two things come to mind. First of all, that sounds fucking awesome, and I would want to do that so bad. Second, they are goddamn geniuses because you're paying yeah. to work. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, like a, it's like a petting zoo, you know? <laughs> you pay to feed their fucking animals. <laughs> right. And you pay for the food, too. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, you know, exactly. being, a, being a part of the beer scene, I mean, that's what every craft beer enthusiast wants to do. Oh, it's oh, so much absolutely. fun. I've poured at a few yeah. festivals for a couple of breweries. It is so much fun. Yeah, that's, I mean, you just want to sit back and pour beer and let people enjoy beer. That's what I'm saying, like, about where I work. I'm like, this isn't even fucking work. This is dream job every fucking time. And every she time doesn't I have to pay in, to I'm do like, it. No, I'm doing the Lord's work. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's, That's awesome. That's fucking rad. That's a really, yeah. really brilliant approach. I like that you can participate in naming the beers. I love that you get to participate in, um, you know, choosing merchandise and fuck the pouring the beer is so rad. Let me know when you're working. Hey, Greg you and I are going to come belly up at the bar. Yeah, road trip. You know, and the, the other cool mm -hmm. thing, you know, is, is there such like a, a smaller spot that the head brewer just hangs out all night, you know? And That's hell awesome. yeah. My buddy who brought me there, he brought in some of his home brews, and this guy is so cool, samples out the home brews, and he's just giving my buddy advice, like what he can do differently, what he did well. I mean, just really great people who run the whole thing. That's awesome. Very that, cool. That's a great program. Love that. Breweries are, are needing to, you know, keep people in the door these days after not doing so well for the last year. And what a great program to to entice people in and, and to get them to stay in. That's that's genius. I think that's so much fun. Yeah, I love that. That's mm -hmm. really cool. So, all right. Well, good shit. Hey, next week is uh, St. Patrick's Day. Anybody doing anything special? <gasps> yeah. I'm working. Oh. <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> You're working on a Wednesday. I, I get to work at, I get to work a golf tournament. I'm so excited no about that. Yeah, I know. It sounds, you guys are like, wah, wah, wah. No, but, do, do you get uh, to be really? the hot chick that rolls around in the golf cart serving people beer? And uh, I'm like more like the hot chick's mom, you know, like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm 40. So it's like Ooh. that. <laughs> but yeah, I'll be at the refuge tent, uh, tent and I will be handing out beers and making people so happy at eight o'clock in the morning. I will probably be good and shittered by about 10. I'll say 8.15. <laughs> it's so funny because Maybe you guys probably don't know this, but literally a golf tournament working the refuge tank, or I'm sorry, why do I keep calling it a tank? I don't know, man. Tent. Because it's the Cause drunk I'm tank? Tanked. Yeah. Because I'm tanked. Because <laughs> I'm, more, yeah, I'm definitely used to being in tanks more than I am <laughs> tents. <laughs> but working a golf tournament at the refuge tent is literally like the birth of Allie and Callie and mm. my whole gateway into just being really involved in the craft beer industry. Like that was like, the opening doors so um, yeah so it's like going back to the beginning for you yeah totally and i'm working with the same guy that like kind of held my hand helped me get the job at refuge and everything so i'm just fucking stoked i That's you awesome. guys know i just love i love what i do i'm so fucking happy to be back at work now mm -hmm. that like we're opening up again and i think we're gonna open up a couple more days nice I'm just like, damn it's awesome yeah, yeah. I love it. So after you and I go to Flex's house and check out his basement, Flex and I yes. are gonna come down there and, and have you pour us beers. Hell yeah. Uh, yep. That is the dream. Mm -hmm. Yes. That is for the dream. For sure. It'd be so fun. Sign me up. And now Allie's <laughs> yeah. all excited to work on St. Patrick's Day. I'm all like, oh, I'm working on St. <laughs> Patrick's Day. <laughs> so you work at a grocery store. Correct. Is it a total shit show on St. Patrick's Day? Um, Not usually. It's kind of a ghost town. Oh, okay. Being that uh, Wisconsin is one of the drunkest states in True. the country. I mean, 
there are people that get out about six, seven a.m. and they're already at bars. I mean, we have bars in town daily that open up at seven a.m. for the uh, the third shifters that get out. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. So if if that just doesn't say it for you right there, I mean, yeah, my uncle I don't used know to live will. in uh, Fond du Lac, and I guess they're the high Fond du Lac, Fond du Lac, Lac. Yeah, I don't know the the drunkest <laughs> city per capita in the U.S. Yeah, Wisconsin has like. It's something stupid, like five of the drunkest cities in the entire nation in the top 10. You say stupid. I say overachiever. I mean, the number is stupid, but it, I mean, we're all proud. <laughs> right. We're, yeah. We're not going to lie. That, I mean, that's one of those where you kind of throw the stats out there and then like you kind of gauge your audience and see how they respond. Like Greg and I, our eyes would be like all excited and happy for you. And then, you know, like the. The judgy people would be like all disgusted. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, it's the judgy. I think people. that's bragging right. I'd, I'd say it is. So, I mean, yeah, I, I walk around with the smirk on my face when I talk about it. <laughs> Good so man. I have a question. Okay, so you're saying seven a.m. is the third shift. I'm sure there's a little bit of sarcasm there, but do you guys actually no, ever legit. close your bars? No, that's legit. Do you ever close your bars? Our bar closing time is two a.m. Okay, I don't know if and that's when do they normal open up or again? if it's not normal. Um, that's normal. They usually, here. they usually open up about eleven a.m., twelve p.m. the next day. Okay. Oh, we have oh. some American legions around here. I think they open up about ten a.m. Oh, and then, uh, like I said, there's a certain bars around here that do open up about six a.m., seven a.m. I was gonna say, yeah. I actually, I might or might not know of a couple bars that <sighs> open way before ten. But I, I imagine that in order to be open that early, and this is based on California laws, in order to be open that early, you probably have to like classify yourself as a restaurant that you know, like Mm-mm. also serves alcohol, Mm-mm. or you I don't just believe nope. so. Oh, Mm-mm. or you just open nope. right up and say, "Come on in, drunks." I can tell you right now, the Silver Fox and PB opens at maybe six, but definitely by seven. Do they, they serve are... food? No. Oh, no. And Dang then um, ETs and Tmec, dude, they're there. Bright and early. <laughs> Bright eyed and bushy tail. Doing lines in the morning. Love it. Yeah. Yeah. A little, a little bump, you know. Yeah. You, you got to get up. Got to get out. Yeah. Get that day started. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they just went to sleep like an hour earlier. Right. You know? How else are you going to do it? I don't, right. I don't coffee. <laughs> yeah. Coffee's not strong enough. Co- yeah. Coffee. Coffee is definitely not going to cut it. Let us know, you guys. What are you guys doing for St. Patrick's Day? I know it's going to be very different this year. Uh, last year, I believe St. Patrick's Day was like right around the shutdown. I went to a brewery's event that they weren't supposed to have, so I won't name the brewery. Um, oh, you're, so, you're so naughty. I'm so this naughty. This is so not your style. Wow. Greg the badass. I'm a naughty boy. Greg is so naughty. I feel like a creep just saying that. Um, <laughs> Say it again. <laughs> yeah. I'm a naughty boy. Well, Tuesday was the se- That's Because Monday is when they announced that they were shutting down the world on the Monday the 16th. Yeah. All right, was it so? If it was Tuesday, yeah. No, so then, yeah, they weren't. St. Patrick's Day was on a Tuesday last okay. year. Yeah, it was going down on a Tuesday. Let me tell you. Mm-hmm. So uh, we'll see what happens. This year might be a little more uh, subtle than last year. But so what are you doing this year? No plans. Any plans? Uh, if we do anything, I imagine we'll go out to one of the local spots, like Fourteen Cannons or Integrant or something like that, and just chill and have some beers that are not green. I do not drink green beer. I drink good beer, and wear green. I don't know. I have a thing against putting hey. green dye in my beer. It's just weird. I've only had green beer once. Yeah, I've had it once or twice back in my like Bud Light days, but we don't need to talk about that. <laughs> I've had it once. Doesn't do anything for me. Um, all right, let's speaking of beer, a lot of beer talk. Let's find out what Flex is drinking over there. Let's make ourselves a little call to the bullpen. He calls to the bullpen for beer. Flex, you're keeping on the uh, the music theme tonight. What are you drinking? Yeah, right on. Uh, so I'm drinking uh, Eagle Park Brewing. Okay. I'm drinking their Bowie's Spacesuit uh, Nelson variant, which is a double dry hopped IPA. Nice. And this one is hopped with Galaxy Citra and Nelson Sauvin hops. And uh, while you take a sip of that, I'll, I'll tell the fine people that are listening. It's 8%. It has a 416 untapped. Pretty respectable score over there. So this pour is a hazy, pale yellow color. Okay. It's uh, very citrusy on the sniffer. <laughs> He's catching on. I love. I've I love watched when a show or two. Comments like, yeah, 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 I love that. Man, I, on the on the palate, it very very dank. 
medium to no bitterness on this. Lots of tropical dankness coming through. Light bodied. It is. This is just an amazing beer. It really is. And the eight percent, you'd have no idea. I was gonna say it sounds like they're they're hiding that eight percent maybe a little too well. You have a couple of these. You're gonna have a good night. That's <laughs> and even nice. better, you're gonna enjoy it because it is a delicious beer. These guys do great work here. Very nice. I haven't had any Eagle Park. That's a that's a local space out there, right? Yeah. So they actually just opened up uh, their second location last year through COVID. Actually. Oof. They were planning for a spring opening, and that kind of got wrecked, so it ended up being later in the summer, but they're putting through a, a lot of beer now, processing a lot of beer, uh, have a new barrel age program going on, and they mm. recently got into uh, distilling spirits as well. Nice. Do they distribute at all? Are they canning? How, how are they doing? Um, so they distribute, I forgot how many counties it is, but it's roughly about 75% of wisconsin oh shit all right and they just wow. started getting into minnesota don't you know yeah <laughs> <laughs> so california yeah that's very california my yeah, we really don't talk like that we do we do put d's and everything that we can oh uh, whoa whoa whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Ooh, i like this set myself up <laughs> yeah you did <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, hey there, yeah. hi there, what you doing there? Oh, oh, I was going to say, Allie oh. wants more information. She'll take her answer off air. Oh, yeah. oh different, yeah, no, yeah. Diff- different, different Ds. Got it. Different, yeah, D's. different Ds. Yeah. Different, that's that's uh. good to know. Uh, well, very good. Sounds like, a, sounds like a tasty beer you're sipping on over there. Over there. Over there. Over there. Over yeah. there. This is a tasty beer I got here. <laughs> Love it. Uh, before we find out what Allie's drinking, old timey word of the week. I couldn't pass this one up. Bung your eye. Bung <laughs> your eye. See? Apparently. Like pink eye? Got pink eye. <laughs> that's, what it sound, that's what I thought at first. <laughs> uh, it's when you drink until one's eye is bunged up or closed. So you drink so much, your eyes are closed. Greg, oh. what, is the, what is the origin of this? Like, where did it come from? Yes. Some drunken asshole from the 1700s. I don't know. <laughs> fucking love flex <laughs> dude he's like intelligent and he drinks beer and he's I know, like, he wants the origin sh- stories on this he things. he like literally he's the one like he cannot stand well you're the same way too greg like spelling errors or improper grammar oh, yeah. or anything like that yeah well what are you talking about bung in the eye is that what it was uh yeah bung your eye and i just looked it up i don't bung i don't eye. have origins on it i'm sorry so okay you, you guys have taken brewery tours correct of course Downtown, there's there's a lakefront brewery. They do some really good tours, and they always bring you to, to the kegging station, right, where they keg the beers. Mm-hmm. And what do you put in to stop the keg? Well, you put in a bung. You put in a bung. So what does that do? It closes it off. Right. So if you bung your eye and you drink too much where you close your eye, it kind of makes sense, doesn't See, it? See? It and just like in a wine barrel, the hole where you sample the wine as it's fermenting and aging is the bung hole. The bung hole. So there you go. It's a nice spot. Oh my god! I'm just thinking of Beavis and Butthead. I need TV for my bunghole. Right. Well, no, it's a uh, it's a thing. It's Dang, a thing when it comes. You guys, to I'm in the presence of greatness. You guys are I, apparently out of my league. Couple I'm of nerds over here. Yeah. MTV. Beavis huge and nerds. Over yeah. Here. We yeah. WrestleMania 14 kind of nerds. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and I'm out again. <laughs> <laughs> it's a hair desert. Uh, before we find out what Allie's drinking. I want to bring back something from last week. We were talking a lot about Pyramid Brewing and where they craft and who owned them. And before we just you know went down a huge rabbit hole, I was like, I'll find out. And I did. So apparently, and, and this all got brought up because we we're talking about like gateway beers and back in the day, like we were drinking all kinds of hefts to kind of <laughs> wean ourselves off of Bud Light and it was a stepping stone. So Pyramid Brewing is owned by Magic Hat Brewing. I think you said that. Yeah, so so that part we knew. The update is Magic Hat is owned by Florida Ice and Farm Company. Oh. Interesting. It's not a brewery at all. That's right. Not. So that would make me think, if you follow the chain of command, that Pyramid Brewing is no longer craft. Wait, why? Because they're owned, owned by a farmer? The definition of craft is less than 25. In fact, I think it's less than 24.5% owned by a non-craft beer entity. Ah, so since they're not in the beer industry at all. Right. Now, they do own multiple breweries, but it seems like they own a lot of other things also. What a loophole. Oh, right. it's such a 
such a loophole. Yeah. That's a bummer. So long story short, they are not craft. Long story short, they are not craft. Do do they know that? <laughs> Does Pyramid know? <laughs> <laughs> like, do we have to break them the news? <laughs> should we get them on the phone? I, I think we should. I think I, I think we need to call them and say, <laughs> "So cute." Hey, bad they news, might be guys. So cute. Yes, they might need can we a please therapist call them right now session. so I can. I need. Yeah, I need to be there when Flex <laughs> breaks the news. He's just so sweet and cute, and it's gonna be like the kindest it would be very gentle yeah. coming from flex like hey you guys yeah i'm really sorry to share this with you guys but i'm about ready to rock your fucking world yeah but in the nicest <clears throat> way possible right like let me take uh, off my shirt there. to soften the blow pyramid brewing uh you guys great great work you guys do great great work oh thanks good so beer. much yeah we, we really love our house beer. yeah thanks um yeah. he's gonna do this shit you guys sandwich. know though uh uh-huh, uh-huh you love our beer is that what you're gonna say you're you're officially not a craft brewery i'm sorry what uh i said it uh, you're owned by farmers. <laughs> you're owned by farmers. <laughs> that was perfect. That was perfect. And scene. Yeah. Mic drop. Phone drop. Uh, so then, if we own a brewery, we wouldn't. It wouldn't be independent. I mean, no. That's I guess <laughs> necessarily. Yeah, <laughs> Never mind. That, sorry. That's a stretch. I know. I'm sorry, guys. I pre-gamed a little bit. I was really nervous to hang out with Flex. I'm not even that cool. Speaking of Ali, let's find out what she's drinking over there. Come on down. Yeah, baby. Ooh, ooh. All right. I am drinking the Upside Down. It's from Hidden Springs Ale Works. They are in Florida. It's a fruited Berliner Weiss. Ooh. It is a 5.5 ABV, 4.13 on untapped. Okay. It's a long description. Uh-oh. Strap in, everybody. <laughs> 2018 Ultimate Brewer Winner. Hazelnut and pineapple Berliner. Boom. That's Go it. on. That's all it says. That's it. That's all it says. Oh, oh you, so- <laughs> you had me hook, line, and sinker. You dirty dog. I, I got you good, you fucker. <laughs> <laughs> License registration, chicken fucker. <laughs> so it's, yeah, it's a pineapple upside down cake Berliner. It's got um, some pineapple. It's got some hazelnut. Um, definitely there's lactose in there. A little bit of cherry, a little bit mm. of like vanilla ish. I would say, does it legit taste like a pineapple upside down cake? I don't know. You, you know what's funny? Uh-oh. I don't know if I've ever had a pineapple upside down oh cake. Oh my. I was just going to say that. I don't think she's ever had one from that response. Yeah. Yeah. Have you guys? Oh, yeah. Well, naturally. Yeah, of course. Wait, our, what? And our, our good friend Nicole, who's been on the show a few times, that's that's her favorite dessert. So I was wondering if it like really tasted like it. Because if so, then I needed to track one down for her. Did you know that is allegedly the signature St. Patrick's Day dessert is pineapple upside down cake? Are you shitting me? What? Yeah. Wow, I had no idea. Yeah, so for our oh St. Patrick's God. Day feast this year, we're having the corned beef and the pineapple upside down. You are full of Wait, shit. Okay. You're lying, right? I, I, like I just found out this. about this on Sunday. That's insanity. I had no idea. Derek. Allie. You know, shit's getting real when I call you by your first name. Yeah, it's not allowed. Derek's his middle name. Flex is his first name. <laughs> <laughs> what Greg said. What is a pineapple upside down cake? Oh isn't my. it like a fruit cake? No. I mean, it has fruit on it. Yeah, it's like. I the, know, but isn't it like like the gummy, nasty, gross fruit? Oh, no. No, no it's like the, it's like a super moist Oh boy! Moist cake, you know, and they they Ooh, finish I it. Like this. <laughs> <laughs> they finish it with the pineapple and the cherries on the top. Yeah, what you uh. do is is like you you get the cake pan and you throw the cherry and pineapple down first. You put the batter on top of it, and then after you bake it, you flip it over. Pineapple upside down cake, and nope. then the pineapple's I'm at the out. top. No, oh, you, fuck that. It's, nope, it's really good. It's nope. good, man. No, it's and good. that's what I was going to say about Nicole. I did not know Nicole was an eighty-year-old lady. I thought like oh, old ladies eat that shit. Oh, no. <laughs> just kidding. I love you. I love you, ice cold beer. <laughs> I'm just teasing. I'm just teasing. If you love pineapple so upside down cake, go follow Ice Cold Beer on the gram and unfollow. Okay, but Allie. there's cherries on it too. Yeah, there's I a cherry. That, so yeah, is, well, yeah. There's I'm a sorry. cherry. Did I mean to say cherries? There's, so there's just one cherry in one the cherry. entire cake. And you can peel that shit off if you're not into cherries. I'm not into cherries. I peel that shit Definitely off. Definitely not into cherries either, Greg. Oh, this well, is a match Well, then just get the slice heaven. that doesn't have a 
car- a cherry in it. Well, the, the cherry's in like the middle. Though. Yeah, it's like a personal. It's like, like a boob. Th- <laughs> it is. Think of like those <laughs> it's mini. Like a boob. <laughs> <laughs> it's like those mini bunt cakes that look like boobs. You get the pineapple and the cherry. Like everyone gets their own. So you get. Oh, they're little guys? Yeah. Well, not what the, all the fuck? Time. I mean, you could do I it different they were, like, ways. The big, but... the big guys, like the nothing bunt cakes. Oh, those I big love guys. the big guys. <laughs> <laughs> the big boobs. <laughs> Well, yes, naturally. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. Anyways, the whole idea is you get a cherry too. and a full slice of pineapple on your pineapple upside down kick. Oh, We're going okay. to so need to get Nicole, Nicole makes on the show. The personal and... ones. See, I've never had a personal one. I've only had one for many. Oh, oh, see, I have only had like the personal ones. Oh my gosh. And I've had none. What a. I've what had a controversy. Form. Yeah. This maybe really maybe the people need to tell us. What an upside down pineapple cake actually is. I is think it so. An yeah, instead cake? of the burrito gate, we can open up the. Or is it a cake from? Is it a cake, cake for many? Oh, come on, people, let us know. We are in Mind dire straits here. Blown. So, anyways, my beer's really good. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad you know to hear though? that. So it's so funny because, um, and I got a lot, a lot of shit on the gram because I like like the fruited sours and people bitch about like it's a fucking beer, like whatever. I don't give a shit about any of that, but. So I love fruit in my beer, but I don't like fruit fucking with my dessert. Mm. Like, I don't want, like, my, I don't want any, like, strawberries touching the chocolate cake or any of that kind of crap. I'm so, I'm 90% down with that. Very rarely. Except for with a pineapple upside down cake. Yeah, like, I, first of all, it's not my favorite, but I do enjoy one from time to time. But uh, I'd say 90% of the time, I do not want fruit touching my cake. I'm not going to yeah. lie. If I, if I have strawberry cheesecake, I, I put the strawberry to the side and I just eat the cheesecake. Like a real yep. man should. Put it back in your pants, Greg. <laughs> Clearly, I'm not alone on this. <laughs> We're allowed to agree on shit. Come on, Allie. <laughs> Greg does the, like a real man should. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God I'm the one who edits this thing. <laughs> I know. It's the worst part. <laughs> For the record, oh. I did not hear it like that. <laughs> <laughs> For the record, I don't think I said it like that. It was, it was more of a man. For the record, like, I'm blushing yeah. for you guys right now. Yeah, I'm man. the one blushing. For yeah. the record, it was more like, yo, bro, me too. <laughs> <We're raining laughs> Chest turtles. pump, bro. It's tubular. Uh, all right, let's uh, <laughs> let's get off this app, this apple, <laughs> this pineapple upside down cake, and uh, wrap up with a little booze news. Okay. Extra, extra, drink all about it. It's time for booze news. A couple things to run down real quick. Uh, Deschutes Brewery has just acquired one of their neighboring breweries, Boneyard Beer, over there in Bend, Oregon. Apparently, the founder of Boneyard Beer used to work for Deschutes, and now they're all chummy chummy. And Deschutes will be using their distribution outlets to help Boneyard Beer become a much bigger entity. They did not, however, acquire Boneyard's CBD line of seltzers. They have said they don't want any part of that. Interesting. That's what I thought. Yeah, that's very interesting. Hmm. Budweiser is launching Budweiser Select nationwide here in the U.S. It's a 4.3% beer that has only 99 calories. And before you ask the question, I looked it up. Bud Light is 4.4%. That one takes me back, Greg. Flex, you had yourself a couple of Budweiser Selects? Yeah, I used to, uh, well, may or may not have gone out to bars underage. And, uh, <laughs> you know, no 19-year-old actually likes the taste of beer. So I would fancy myself some Budweiser Selects. <laughs> Trying to get that locale beer. We're not proud of it, Greg. Not proud of it over here. <laughs> hey, I've drinking drinking many a shitty beer in my day that I prefer not to talk about. I feel you. Wait, so is it beer or is it? It's beer. Is it beer? It's beer. Oh, it's, it's like, like beer. a Michelob Ultra? Yeah, same idea. Oh, okay. It's a healthy, quote unquote, healthy beer. Low, okay. low ABV, all that stuff. The old one used to be, uh, it was Bud Fifty Five or something like that. <laughs> Bud Select Fifty Five, so it was only fifty five calories. Oh wow! This must be very much a Midwest thing because I hadn't heard of it. And then, according to the article, Budweiser Select had been in St. Louis like this entire time since like two thousand five, and so that's crazy. Yeah. Well, have you guys ever heard of uh, the Miller Sixty Four? Uh, I think that's a no. No? Well, it's funny, because when I think MGD64, that sounds kind of familiar. Yeah, it's not even called MGD64. It's just Miller 64. It is a 64-calorie beer. It's like 2% alcohol. Oh, then I don't think so, no. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, no. This body is no accident. (laughs) (laughs) I'm not fucking around. I am clearly not fucking. Maybe I should fucking do some research, because- uh, Is it as gross as it sounds? 
it just doesn't it tastes like beer water that's what i would imagine it's like yeah. the runoffs of a oh. beer yeah ew uh this one's for Allie. boston beer the owners of truly hard seltzer are launching truly extra an eight percent hard seltzer get a few extra abvs <laughs> in there when your normal blackout isn't enough reach for a truly <laughs> extra to get that extra blackout I love that I have the worst reputation with seltzer. <laughs> I love I that mean, you do too. Dude, I you fuck one goat, you know what I mean? It's, <laughs> oh my gosh. Jeez Louise. What the it heck? fucking happens. It does every time I'm I black out. Every when you said fine. that on the gram the other day, I just about spit my my water out. <laughs> the best is, is I could tell by Flex's reaction that he does not know that old story. I don't know that story. You fuck one. That's one of those that if you know the joke, it's fucking hilarious. If you don't know the joke, then you sound like a weirdo person very sideways. Yeah, you sound like a goat fucker. (laughs) Hey, you goat fucker. That's yeah. Yeah. That's kind of what I'm thinking right now. (laughs) Yeah, I'll send you the joke later. It'll it'll all make sense. If not, good for you. (laughs) (laughs) Gotta get it where you can, right? <laughs> if anybody wants to send me any seltzers, though, I'm down for trying more. Especially, I mean, not truly. Oh no, but the truly is still independent. Yeah, truly's craft. It's owned by Boston Beer, who owns uh, Sam Adams. So never have I ever had a truly or a White Claw. I sent you a truly. Did you ever drink it? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck! I just got so busted. <laughs> I sent it to you as a joke because I, I knew you had never had it. <laughs> I, but see, if I had it, then I could never play the never have I ever game. There is that. I, the truly. I don't know if you've ever talked about this on the show, but we were doing <laughs> some sort of like beer trading back and forth. And I gave it was you know, birthdays. I sent you beers for your birthday. You did That's the right. And I sent you yeah. some birthday beers. And I had like, you know, yeah. Integrin and all these nice beers that I love up here. And then a fucking pineapple truly, which is like the worst flavor they make. Is it the worst? Dude, the best is I wish you could have like, Popped in a little recorder when I opened. <laughs> I was like, "What the <laughs> das fuck?" <laughs> well, I'm like, obviously, I'm not going to be like, "Why the fuck did you put a truly in there?" Like, and I was just like, "Thanks." The fact that you never brought it up, I was laughing so hard. Well, because I took a picture and I posted it on the gram. I'm like, "Thank you so much," and you're like, "You know, that's a joke, right?" And I'm like, "Oh, is it? I have uh, no idea." Yeah. <laughs> oh, that that made my day. Good times. Good times. <laughs> <laughs> we we will end things on this story. A drunk driver blows over nine times the legal limit. The driver who reportedly had one of the highest blood alcohol contents ever recorded crashed near the Plateau Travel Plaza. This is in Washington, I believe. Friday, but then drove off heading toward Warm Springs, said the police department. Police officers pulled over the driver and found him to be highly intoxicated. According to the press release, police also discovered several alcoholic beverage containers within the vehicle. When officers asked Dan Zuka to step out of the car, he allegedly fled the traffic stop and a police chase ensued. But he made it only approximately a half a mile before crashing again, this time into a concrete barrier. The blood alcohol content was 0.778%, which is more than nine times the legal limit of 08 The police department said his license has also been suspended in Oregon for an alleged history of driving under the influence. How how is this fucker not dead? Right, that is just from the BAC alone. Your blood is seventy five percent (laughs) alcohol. I mean, that's insane. I mean, he's he's pushing up against one percent alcohol. Holy smokes! Mm -hmm. I don't know whether to be impressed or disgusted. I'm 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 kind of I was kind of the same thing. I was kind of trying to. Judge your guys' reaction and see. I'm, 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 I'm just mind blown, really. Like, yeah. I'm appalled. What? <laughs> wow. I am appalled. I can only imagine. <laughs> this individual needs to be locked up for forever. What a monster. Well, yeah. I mean, <laughs> there's functioning alcoholics and there's this guy. <laughs> I'm curious, though. You know what's okay? So when he fled the scene, mm-hmm. did they chase again. him? Yeah. Well, he they pulled him over. He fled the scene. Then he ran away. They chased him. But Chase didn't last Wait, long. Wait, ran away on on foot at this Sorry, point? Sorry, drove away quickly. Okay. That's um, thinking he can't so run like, too far. Right, or drive too far. It only lasted or a half drive. a mile before he crashed again, and then they caught up with him. Well, the thing that's crazy is it's like, as a police officer, what would you want to start a police chase for this situation? Like, I would think as a police officer, you would not need to, because you know this guy's only making it. A very short distance before it runs into something else. It just seems like such a dangerous situation to get themselves involved in, like as far as other people or whatever. Well, thus is the job. 
Yeah, but I'm I'm, well, I'm just saying if this guy is like, you know, as drunk as he was and he's in panic mode and now he's starting to drive like a fucking maniac even more than he already was. And I don't know. Do you, you guys know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, well, it just seems like a. Well, gnarly... I'm just curious how many times he had been arrested for this prior. That's that's a great question. That he hadn't had his license suspended before or already. Yeah. And then the fact that he got his license back if it was already suspended. Well, and they say his last name is Danzuka. I'm imagining this is Scott, and that's why he's not here tonight. Well, that was the, my next question was, is Danzuka, is that like a, a screen name? I thought of Danny Zuko from Greece immediately. <laughs> Thinking about Sandra and like the leather when she comes out with like oh. the firm and like the red lips. Tell mm-hmm. me about it, stud. Oh, well, that's a drop. I'll say yeah, say, say that again. <laughs> Slower. I, I can't. <laughs> All right. I think we've reached Tell that point. Tell me about it, Flex. Oh. Wait, I have, I have one thing, hey, two oh. things I have to say. Okay. Hi to Vanessa. Hi, Vanessa. And I forgot to add just a little shout out for um my buddy, Javier. He is in Florida. He's the one that sent me the Hidden Springs beer. Oh. Diario de Cervezas on the gram. Shout Thank out to Javier. so much. Yeah. Javier, Javier is the best, man. Oh, fuck, dude. I fucking love Javier. He's so rad. So thank you for the Hidden Springs treasure. I appreciate you. And Vanessa, me love you long time. Okay. <laughs> I'm all, we love it. Vanessa. We love Chris. Love Chris is like our new best friend. Oh, my gosh, Chris. Chris is going to take my job. Yeah, that's accurate. Either Chris or Flex <laughs> or, or both. We'll, we'll find out soon enough. Fuck. <laughs> hey, I might well, be able to make everybody. this an every Monday thing. <laughs> Sorry, Allie. <laughs> oh, man. It's good while it lasted. Oh, well. What can I say? I wish I could have said the same. Oh. <laughs> Ooh, that's that. a drop. That's a drop. You're right fired. There. Yeah. <laughs> oh, geez. Can you send my last check in the mail, please? Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. Bye. I'll overnight it. Uh, let's hit some music and get up on out of here. <laughs> Flex, thank you so much for hanging 10 with us tonight. Much appreciated. For sure. Yeah, thanks, thanks for having Flex. me. I'm honored. I am honored, guys. We are honored that you uh, blessed us with your very buff presence. It was great. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Allie's very honored. Um, and make sure you find us at theunfilteredgentleman.com. Go to the socials. We're the Unfiltered Gentleman. Flex me a beer with underscores in between. Allie and Callie, A L L Y dot I N dot C A L L Y. Leave us a drunk voicemail, 805 538 beer 2337. And the Unfiltered, wow. And the Unfiltered Gentleman at gmail.com because words are hard. I think that's everything. Thank you all for hanging out with us tonight. I hope everyone stays very well hydrated. And on that note, Good night, everybody.